Hey Rollers, this is Josh. If you're a nerd like us, you should check out our Patreon. We have bonus QPR content, like what Eek and Emberlin are doing while the party continues their adventure, Solonar first getting into an Alarian gang, or how Boat got into the professional wrestling circuit. Thank you so much. We're only able to record QPR with the support of listeners like you. Check us out at patreon.com slash goblinsgrowlers. If Alon ends up sounding like he's calling in from a train tunnel, then we'll just add to the beginning of the episode that he was remote and recording on his work computer. He was he was recording live from a train. <laughs> live from hey. Golden, Colorado. Hey, I have some of the sounds to add to Alon's file. Chugga, 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 Hey there, hey there. I, I said, hey there, do you have a ticket? Let me see your ticket so I can stamp it, sir. No ticket. What? You can't not have a ticket and be on this train. We're on our way to, hmm, quid pro roll. Next up, quid pro roll. Next up, quid pro roll. I'm kicking you out, sir. You can't get to quid pro roll without rolling the rest of the way there. Chugga, 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 <laughs> chugga, 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 chugga. Get your bits. Get your random NPC voices. Bits and NPC voices. Uh, Sir, I would like a voice, please. Why, you've already got one, friend. That'll be $3,000. Oh, perfectly affordable. Quid Pro Roll. (laughs) This is Quid Pro Roll, a fantasy live play adventure where a party of unlikely heroes embark on a quest to bring dragons back to their world. Well, howdy, listener. Welcome to the Daily Crier Listening Show, where all the news and varying and beyond can make its way right to you. You know, it's a funny thing should happen that a date, once so important to me, came and passed without so much as a glance. Or was it I who failed to look out my door and see burdens of self-importance holding baggages in hand? Having my good friend Artemis here, bacon, playing card games, had me flowing on smiles past my own mind in the passage of time. And while she left just this morning, traveling somewhere, my elevated mood left me to only laugh when I noticed my bottles went untouched this year. Reminds me of the words of uh, Baudelaire on escaping time by being drunk. And if sometimes... On the steps of a palace, or the green grass of a ditch, in the mournful solitude of your room, you wake again, drunkenness already diminishing or gone. Ask the wind, the wave, the star, the bird, the clock, everything that is flying, everything that is groaning, everything that is rolling, everything that is singing, everything that is speaking. Ask what time it is, and wind, wave, star, bird, clock will answer you. It is time to be drunk, so as not to be the martyred slave of time. Be drunk. Be continuously drunk. On wine, on poetry, or on virtue, as you wish. Well, speaking of time, Goza had seconds to react with the whole fiery dragon priest thing turning into a snake and dragging her into a tub. Surprising end to a surprising situation. I'll give him that. And then there was Boat and Johannes coming in with even more water and surprises. At least Johannes found a good use for the Folger fridge box, tying up the unconscious Ilfiel and locking her in one with her head sticking out. And hey, uh, Solonar found the traffic monsters, so that's something good. This whole stay at the Folger home has been shoveling coals over a powder keg. Well, I plan to go for a walk today. Maybe talk to some stars and birds. But you, as always, you all take care now. We're going to open on Solinar in the stable of the mythical creatures, staring at this unicorn like 
me as an elementary schooler. I think I've got to let them out. I think it's I think it's the best possible move. Also, it's a unicorn. Like there's there's no way this goes poorly for me. Solinar, do you need me to come up there? I mean, it might be helpful to have someone here to distract the unicorn while I pick the lock. I've heard that while they can be really flighty, they can also be very stabby. And I'm going to need to be hands-on with the lock on the exterior of the building for probably a minute or so to get it open. I can't imagine that the unicorn, and she's she's climbing up the ladder as she's saying this, I can't imagine that the unicorn is going to stab you while you're trying to free it. I have heard two very separate, beautiful accounts about unicorns. One is that they recognize those with pure hearts, pure intentions, and pure ability. And they let those people do things like ride on their back and collect some of their tears and use those tears to cure really crazy diseases. And then the other is that they know people whose hearts are not pure and who are motivated by greed and power. And then what they do with those people is they run them through with their horn. (laughs) <laughs> so you're saying that people with impure intentions that aren't very capable are in danger when they're around unicorns? Yes. I don't know that freeing a unicorn would be safe for our friends. Well, but we're not going to go out this way. So we just free the unicorn and then we go out a different way. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you say. And this way... The odds of the unicorn going on a rampage in the village and killing tens or even hundreds of people are significantly lower because I'm sure that there are very capable people in the village with very pure motivations. Right. Okay. I'll keep her distracted. Perfect. Then I'll get to work. And Solinar uh, slips out of the barn and then goes around to the outside until he finds the unicorn stall and then starts picking the lock. Roll sleight of hand. Twenty-one four. Yeah, that lock goes bye bye. That is a well picked lock. Solinar's going to uh, not like fully swing open the gate, but is going to like open it a little bit and then shuffle back to being inside the barn because he's not fully convinced that the unicorn's not going to kick through the gate and then try and skewer him. So as Solinar cuts around to the other side, the unicorn is going to kind of gently nose the door so that it swings open further. It will stop and look back at the pair of you before running off into the distance. You're free, go. Go frolic in the woods. God, they're majestic. It is at this moment that you can hear voices coming from under the trap door. No oh, crap, we've been made. So what do you? What, what, what do we do? What? 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 Do, thing number one. What does that mean? Thing number two. That sounds bad. Thing number three. What do we do if it's bad? Well, door well, yeah. pops open. Fridge delivery. <laughs> oh, thank oh. God. Oh, it's just Johannes. What do you mean fridge delivery? Did you order um, one spicy hot uh, chromatic dragon priestess? Um, no. What? Um. Well, I've got bad news then. I, I I was having a conversation and then um, I was I was talking about the dragon priestess and and then oh, I think we kidnapped her. Koza, you failed interacting with a woman so hard that she's in an ice box. Well, I don't know what that means. That's well. Now hold on. When we say that she's in an ice box, are, we're not talking about like she's in one piece, right? Oh yeah, she's in one piece. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. And and alive. Probably. No. Uh, or I, I, did we did did we kill her? I, no. I don't. Protect her, Paul. She's alive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We okay. extinguished her. We didn't kill her. You, uh, let's let's not use that word to describe that. Good God, we just we just released a unicorn back into the wild. Well, that's so much more pleasant to talk about. I know, right? Well, uh, I mean, unless the unicorn encounters somebody with bad intentions and runs them through. Well, I think maybe that person karmically had it coming to them. Solinar, that might actually be a really good thing. There's a free 
prison cell right do you here. Think it's a, do you think it's a oh. gore to gore salesman? Oh, <laughs> no. And if we could get the fridge up here, we could put her in the cage and then someone would come to check on the animals in the next day or so and they'd find her then and we'd already be long gone. I will say we could probably take her out of the, the fridge. We could I, probably I, do no. that and that would make things easier. I don't nope, know that that's nope. such a good idea. Nope, she's basically made a fire. We, we need to keep her in there. If she's loose, she's just going to get out of the cage and be that much more angry, I think. I think if she gets released, we're in big trouble because that's what Koza said. Um, I, I, well, I, I, but I agree. It also feels really bad to just leave her in there. All right, so here's here's what we're going to do. But we're... Can we get an actions have consequences line? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think you've pretty much said it there, friend. Actions have consequences. We don't... I think we're still in the process of learning this lesson as a group, but uh, we can't just go do whatever the heck we want and then not escape any kind of repercussions from that. Koza, this is why I stopped lighting things on fire and then you kidnap somebody? <laughs> This does seem like a valuable learning lesson where perhaps, uh, here's, I know we don't have a lot of time to, you know what, we'll, we'll talk about it on the road, but I want to know how a conversation goes so bad that it turns into kidnapping, because that's never been my experience with kidnapping. Is Cole here? Is, is, I, I feel like he's got to, right? Like, unless yeah, we left him here. with the cart. I believe you left him with the cart. <laughs> Ah, perfect. Good. I didn't want him to have to, we would have to give him a lecture about how kidnapping is bad. <laughs> do as we say, not as we do. Yeah, kidnapping bad people is still bad. We can't leave her tied up in an icebox in a cage. I, we need, I think we should at least untie her. Uh, okay, yeah. Y yeah, let, let's, let's do that. Koza, are you okay? Um, I, this, this really I didn't really mean this to go this way I I assume that this wasn't part of your plan but Koza things go wrong for you a lot what's <laughs> what's new about this uh, 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 wow <laughs> Ilfiel might have been hot but the real burns came from here <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> So, why is this getting to you? Um, um, maybe we should just talk about it later. Okay. Or, I guess, I don't know, I just, I thought we were having a nice conversation, and then she tried to convince me to join, join her, which just seemed like the greatest idea to me, but, I don't know, like, I, I also didn't have a strong reason not to join her, but I didn't... <laughs> I didn't... I don't know. What do you mean you didn't have a strong reason not to join her? What do you mean you didn't have a strong reason to not join the chromatic dragons? <laughs> um, well, no, like, um, I well, I care about you all and I don't want anything bad to happen to you all. But, but I, I, I don't know, we should, we, we can talk about this later. We should probably get going, right? <laughs> yeah, let's, <laughs> let's double back. And get Cole and get out of here. Johannes, I'm sorry that we're making things weird with your family. Oh, I've been making things weird with my family since I was born. <laughs> You're able to untie Ilfiel and get her set up into the cage before she wakes up. And you all hustle out of there pretty quickly. You're going to head down back through the tunnel and up out through the manor finding Cole and the cart he seems to be like harnessing up the animals comfortably like he seems like he's sort of adept at it and he's got everything packed and it's strangely adult for someone of his age yeah I mean the man's killed the man's killed before <laughs> <laughs> Cole did you organize the cart this looks great 
Oh my gosh, look, all of our different types of flour are in alphabetical order. <laughs> I didn't even realize we had three of these varieties of flour. Nicole smiles and nods. He is going to look over at Johannes and uh, look kind of down, look kind of sad, and uh, then pats him on the shoulder once in a gesture of comfort. Thanks, buddy. I know. I sit here every time and I'm like, man, I really wanted to take Truffles with me. But at the end of the day, Truffles is a happy pig here and also getting a little long in the tooth, if you know what I mean. And I don't think that uh, she's ready for, for a real big adventure. I think she's ready for a nap and maybe through five meals a day. He looks over at Koza, Boat, and Solinar and Alita. There's something kind of pleading in his expression. What's wrong, we're buddy? Not, we're not leaving you here. You're not going to stay here. You're going you're gonna to keep on keeping on with us. As he pulls out his pan flute and begins to play, it's sorrowful. It's... It's a sympathy to an abandonment that he's witnessed. Something inside all of you longs for home. Maybe even a home that you've never really known. There's a feeling of loss inside all of you. Well, I was I was feeling confused and a little exasperated. And now I'm just incredibly sad. So that's a place to be. Yeah. I'm not really feeling motivated. I mean, we should... We should still get out of here. I just... You know... To where? To what purpose? What does it even matter? (laughs) (laughs) Ennui has defeated the party. (laughs) All the chromatic dragon priests needed to do to take the party down was fill them with ennui. <laughs> it's a spell. You fill your opponent with ennui and they just kind of like lay down and shrug. It just it just makes a Frenchman appear who's like, ah, oh, what is life? What is even the point of it all? And he just like takes a big drag off a cigarette and is like, ah, oh, only suffering and vanishes. <laughs> wait, wait. And then he goes, oh. We. <laughs> <laughs> Johannes picks up uh, the cart and he he uh, has or it's already saddled to the horses, it's already ready to go. And we and he's like, okay, well, let's get on the road. With a snap of the reins, the party goes off, leaving behind the Fulger Manor. There is a feeling of something unfinished, something that in the back of your minds you know is going to come back and bite you. Yeah, maybe it was the chromatic dragon priestess who said that she was going to kill us if she got back to her friends. (laughs) There is something else that also feels like you have left something behind. Johannes, what if we... I don't... I don't know if you are ready to hear this, but I think... It makes more sense to bring it out into the open than to continue skirting around it and trying to pretend like it's not a thing. Your family is dealing in illegal creatures. (gasps) How can you say that to me after I stood in a stable full of illegal creatures and (laughs) said, maybe this is not something that my family have anything to do with, even though it's on their property? Well, I'm, I'm sorry to say we didn't bring this to your attention sooner. But the ledger that we got from that smuggler's ship, it's got your brother's signature on it. Sebastian. Primarily, Henry yes. Nathan. No, it was, it was primarily Sebastian. And oh, okay. He we, usually is the best at signing things. We we didn't want to He's got a big fancy it. S, and then the rest of it just kind of looks like a little squiggle. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't want to bring it up immediately because we weren't sure that we knew what we were seeing but now that we've seen illegal animals on your family's property we know that Ilfiel was there to do business I don't know what business uh, I guess Koza can fill us in on that and we we saw the ledger that had your brother's signature on it I, it's hard to argue 
I don't know that your whole family's in on it, but it seems like at the very least Sebastian is. And based on the two of them being together, I would guess that Jonathan is as well. Hmm. Have we gone too far? Can I, uh, down the road, Alex, can, can I, can I be like, hey, I, you know what? I'm going to have a quick word with my brothers before we leave. I mean, you're down the ways a little bit, but only about a mile or so. Mm-hmm. Do you, Yo- do you Johannes, want? Johannes hops, hops over the side of the cart and he goes, I'm running back and I'll be back in just a bit. Here's the deal. When, when Cole played that song and it was really sad and we were all sitting there sad and I had some tears coming down my face. I thought to myself, why am I so sad? I feel like I have a longing for home, but I'm at my home. And that's when it dawned on me that my home is not actually my home. I've never viewed it as my home because I've always not felt super comfortable there. And you know what? My family needs to know. Well, do you, if you want, uh, I could give you a lift on midnight back there and then I could be close by for moral support. Could you really? I really appreciate that because I've got short legs. I really could. I, both of these things I would do for you. Okay. We're going to be right back. And Solinar puts a hand out to lift Johannes up onto midnight. And then the two of them gallop off towards the Fulger Manor. As you gallop off towards the manor, uh, Cole is going to look at Koza and Boat and Alita in like up, up, of panic. He's going to kind of look back at where they've gone and then look back at you guys, then look back at them and look back at you guys. What's the problem, pal? He's going to make a small heart symbol with his hands and then break it apart. Oh, no. Johannes is going to get heartbroken. He nods. Oh, Lord. All right. Um, If the ennui didn't take take him, then that certainly will when combined with it. Um, All right. Do we have to go? I guess we have to go stop them. Cole, like, looks down and then he looks back at where they had left and then he looks back down at you guys and he looks back down and and he he's scrambling he has no idea what the right course of action is but you can tell that there is something that Cole knows is waiting for Johannes at the manor a chimera a couple of things yeah (laughs) a commitment (laughs) I'd prefer it was a chimera oh no Vroom, vroom, vroom. <laughs> How do you turn this thing on? <laughs> All right, so I guess we need to go back there and t- try and stop some of this. Um, maybe I should put on my clown costume and sneak back in. <laughs> okay, now we're going to cut back to Johannes and Solar. <laughs> I am not allowing this build-up to be destroyed by Boat in another costume. I wish I'd never gotten rid of that rat costume. <laughs> rat king, rat king, rat king. <laughs> The number of times that I, they've been like, so what's one thing that your players have ever done that, are, that has really thrown you? And I was like, allow me to tell you of the masquerade ball I spent months <laughs> setting up, only to have it be destroyed by an off-brand Chuck E. Cheese. You're like, allow me to point you to every gosh darn episode. <laughs> Chuck E. I, Cheese, like this off-brand, so Frank Velveeta, just this terrible what? off-brand Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> The whole time we're in Marine, it'll just be the party, except Boat, interacting with, like, the Queen of Ilaria and what knights are still in Marine and figuring out plot stuff and, like, next steps for getting to the Boris Empire. Boat, meanwhile, is going from store to store to store being like, (laughs) I'm looking for a rat costume. I'm sorry, sir. Rat costumes have for some reason been outlawed in the country of (laughs) Ilaria. They're illegal. (laughs) <laughs> they were they were connected to a high profile arson in Talaire. <laughs> <laughs> We've banned them all, along with any other dumb costume that Brandon thinks of. That's just not you're taking the joy out of this world. <laughs> <laughs> first, first you take away bananas. Now this. Mm. I excuse mm. you. I gave you bananas as a very big narrative hint. So I don't you, want to hear nothing. You gave you us. Make, you gave us. You banana. make costumes illegal, and you know the people are going to rise up. <laughs> <laughs> you Let gave us, us banana cosplay. Yeah, as a very big narrative snake. 
regardless. Johannes, Solinar, the two of you ride to Fulger Manor, and with Midnight galloping off, it takes but moments for you to arrive at the front. You see Josephine standing in the doorway, looking surprised that you lo- looped back, but it does appear that she was watching you all leave. Johannes jumps out off the saddle, and he starts, uh, with purpose, moving towards the door. And he's like, Josephine, I need to talk to Jonathan and Sebastian. Oh, uh, yes, they're in the library. Perfect. Perfect. Solinar's going to dismount Midnight and then be like, all right, I'm not, I'm not going to tie you to anything, but please do not go very far. Please, I am begging you. She, may, she looks at you and gives a soft I, huff. If you stay close by, I will buy you the finest quality oats in the next town we are in. I swear this to you on my life. And then he goes to follow Johannes. The two of you enter the Fulger Manor, and there is this cold feeling inside the house. Johannes strides with purpose towards the library. I'm assuming opening the doors like Aragorn at Helm's Deep. <laughs> yeah, but shorter. Yes, but 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 shorter. They don't they don't make quite a loud sound. They make a little bit more of an eat sound because this is a halfling. Oh my huh? s- what? Oh my god! Did somebody call me? And as <laughs> <laughs> no, eek, you're not. It's not and your it's... scene. Uh. Okay. As the doors are swinging open, the air in the room pushes out, which just like flows Johannes's hair magnificently behind him. The two brothers, both bent over a desk, consulting some papers, look up in surprise. What are you doing back here? I'm here because it's important for me to talk to you guys about what's the right thing to do. They look at each other, then look back at you. <laughs> That's right. I went to school for six, maybe even seven years to learn what the right thing to do was. And and you know what? It took me a long time to pass right thing to do class. But I got a paladin license now, and I'm, I'm on my way to being the best paladin I can be. And I realize that the best paladin I can be is one that confronts my family when they're doing something wrong. Jonathan is going to click his tongue and move away from the desk. He rolls his shoulders a little and walks over towards Johannes. Okay. I'll bite. What do you want to say? I want to say first off that if you were the only thing in this house that was biting, then it would be fine because you've done that your whole life. But... In reality, what else is biting is everything inside of those stables out there that you're probably illegally selling because you shouldn't have beasts anyways. And remember Dad's whole rule that he said to me when I was age seven with no beasts on the mantered property. He said that specifically. And now look at it. You guys have filled it with beasts and you're doing illegal transactions. Yeah, we are. Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why, Johannes? Why we're having to do this? Because I know it's wrong. I know it's illegal. It's not my choice. Do you want to know why we're doing it? Yes. Wonderful. You ruined the family. You telling every other family, every single structure, every single invention, every single thing that our family's fortune was built on, you just gave it out. Now we have hundreds of people selling inventions that our family has held close to our chest for centuries. Our family is in financial ruin because of you. I am doing what I can to keep our family alive. This is more your fault than it is anybody here. You know what? As much as that hurts, a long time ago, it would have hurt even more. If there's one thing that I've come to learn over my journeys with friends, trying to figure out right from wrong and wrong from right, and figure out the best way to do anything, is to protect the most people. And you know what? If there's one thing I know about our inventions, it's that I've seen more in the last couple of years than I saw in my whole life. And you know what? Maybe even though it means that we don't have that much money, Maybe the fact that people have access to 
cold when they need cold, warm when they would eat warm, wings when they want to fly, and also giant flippers that had big snorkels when they want to swim. I think that there's some value in making sure that people have access to those things. And... And as I've learned a little bit more about money, not a lot because I'm really bad with it and I continue to be bad with it and I acknowledge that as one of my shortcomings. But as I learned more, I realized that maybe it's not everything like we always were told it was. And in fact, maybe it's actually nothing because I've had lots of fun and I've had lots of good things and I've been able to help people without money. Well, actually with a good bit of money that I've always had access to because I'm <laughs> very lucky. But... <laughs> <laughs> but I've learned I've learned to live without that. The Fulger arc is the nobles of the party learn about privilege. <laughs> and I'm just saying that, you know what? A lot of people do a lot of things to get money. I've seen lots of things and I've had people try to kill me and I've had people try to sell me to prisons and I've had also like uh, other things happen that are not good, but I've also had people sell me good apples, and I've had people sell me a, a cool squirrel who's here. Here's the squirrel. Okay, he can go back into the breastplate now. Dayquin kind of, like, pokes his head out because he knows he's been summoned, but quickly scrambles back in because he doesn't want to be a part of this very intense exchange. <laughs> and I've had people sell me tons of citric fruits. Look, there's a good ways to make money that doesn't involve doing evil things. And as a paladin, even though I haven't been turning in any of the things that I've collected when I've defeated monsters and stuff along the way, I could be making money doing that. Which is a good thing, because monsters hurt people, which is what you guys are sending out there. And then what's gonna happen when I have to come up against a monster that you sold? What if something happens to me? My job is de beating monsters. That's literally my job. I swore an oath that I fell asleep halfway through because it was days, you have to be in front of an altar. Look, it's really hard being a paladin, okay? <laughs> but I'm doing my best. <laughs> Jonathan is going to sit in one of the chairs and kind of put his head in his hands for a minute. He's going to sigh and look up. You just... I... I'm not going to sit here and say that it's easy because it's not. Every day... Is a different challenge. And that's the reality that we are in. And I'm not going to say that I'm going to beat every challenge in front of me. Because I won't. But you know what? I'm really lucky. I'm lucky I'm surrounded by a lot of people who are really good at challenges. Because with their help, I feel like I could beat anything. Not me alone, but we collective. And I feel like this family's the same way. If we started to actually look at each other like a team and work together, we're all very good at different things. Like, you've always been really good with transactions and man mapping things and making sure that numbers line up. And Sebastian has a really kick-ass signature. <laughs> <laughs> and I've admired it every time I ever sees it. And, not, and, and then not only that, but Josephine is actually a really, really good negotiator. She sits there, she understands what people are saying. You guys always leave her out. But she's so good at understanding what people don't say, which is the hardest things to understand. Solinar, Solinar puts a steadying hand on Johannes's shoulder, like just standing behind him. Roll persuasion, Johannes. How about, oh, I love that I have a plus six on this, because how about a 15? Jonathan is going to sigh, look down. You're different than when you left. Johannes, I... You can only be what you are. Maybe me holding on to this wasn't about you at all. What would you have me do? I don't want our family name to collapse. I don't want this home of ours to collapse. What what do we do? Well, I'll tell you right now. You look inside of yourself and you weigh the options and you say, what's going to be the best thing for the most people? 
And I've done that many times. And look here. I've gotten it wrong a lot. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm different because I'm different by trial by fire. And I mean literal fire. Multiple fires. <laughs> <laughs> every step of the way. But if you do that every time, then I, then I promise you, you're going to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and you're going to say, you know what, with all the information available to me, I did the best thing I could do. And then you can say that honestly to your friends, which is important because you never know when you might set a cast zone of truth over all of them just to keep them all on the toes. And then, then you get to say, I did the best I could do. And you can mean it. I had the best thing. I felt like this was the best thing for everybody when I did it. And look, when I say everybody, I don't just mean our family. I mean everybody. That's one thing that I learned in all my journeys. And it took me a long time. They told me about it in Paladin School a lot, but for real. Look inside yourself and say, what's going to be the best thing? And I don't know where all those beasties are going, but if they're going to the Boris Empire, well, then I've got a lot of friends on the Knights of Alaria who are going to be running into some pretty big bad beasties that I wish they wouldn't. And if they're trying to keep us as Alarian safe, well, then we need to help them to keep us safe. The two brothers look at each other then back at Johannes. There is a sense of shame in their eyes. A feeling like they're reaching an epiphany they hadn't had before. The steel that was behind them is just gone. They both look deflated. Let me make this clear. I would never have figured all this out Literally never, if it wasn't laid out for me step by step by my friends on a wagon ride of about one mile. <laughs> but that goes to show that the support that you guys could give to each other, and also from me. Look, there's things that I'm still very not good at, but look who I've got. Not just this guy. He's, this is, well, the, okay, I've got one guy with me right now, but imagine other people are behind me, because that's how I imagine me all the time. And look, we'll help you. We'll support you. It's not quite an army, but you know what? Check this out. Blah! <laughs> and I just uh, throw up a bunch of chickens. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I can do that once a day. Chicken breath. This is what Bahamut always had in mind. Yeah, Bahamut was really, like, ready to, to support Johannes with all of his abilities, including, but not limited to, chicken breath. Some of them lay eggs. I can vomit chickens once a day. Mm -hmm. They'll disappear, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lair action. They look at each other. Sebastian speaks up after putting his hand on on. Jonathan's shoulder. Look, there's stuff that can't be undone, but Johannes, we'll, we'll think about what you've said. Here. Don't get yourself killed while you're out there. I, I, I don't want anything to happen to you. Hey. I will do my absolute best because at the end of the day even though it's hard for me to view this place right now as a home I know I have a home to come back to and we all can find that together
Quid Pro Roll is a co-production of Alpha Comics and Games with Goblins and Growlers. Our audio production and all original music composition is provided by Gabriel Perez. He can be found at Amethyst Audiomancer on Instagram. The voice of Alita and our DM for the podcast is Alex Smith. She can be found at Alpha Comic Games on Twitter. The voice of Charles Gravyboat Barnes is Brandon Dingus. He can be found at Way of Brandalore on Twitter. The voice of Eek and Koza are Chapman Adams. He can be found at What Are Birds on Instagram. The voice of Johannes is Alan. He can be found at The Dungeon Meowster on Instagram. And finally, the voice of Solonar is me, Josh Maltby, and I can be found at Black Cloak DM on Twitter. Thanks so much for listening. Hey, Gabe, have fun putting a lot of chicken noises throughout the <laughs> <laughs> serious conversation at the end there.